Hello, today I will follow the tradition and begin the movie with some geomagnetic disturbances. Actually, in this case it's hard to call it simply a some disturbance. If you're following my movies for some longer time, you should remember some of the geomagnetic instabilities which I recorded in the past. Till today, the strongest pulsation captured by me took place on 17th of March, during the event which I've called as Mega Storm. Disturbances which were recorded in Kiruna on this day exceeded 1500 nanoteslas, what was a sign of a very strong geomagnetic storm, and indeed, auroras were visible even in Poland. Well, it seems that comparing it with the graph which is visible on the screen, Mega Storm looks like a morning breeze next to a category 5 hurricane. Pulse, which you can see on this image, was around 10 times stronger. During this rapid and unexpected event, all three magnetic components dropped by 12,000 nanoteslas. This is well beyond our understanding of space weather interactions. Such things simply shouldn't happen at all. Luckily, I've managed to save the graph on my computer before the station crew notice it, because you won't find it anymore in the process data archive. The only sign that something strange happened at this time is the K index bar, which can't fit into the frames where 9 is the highest value. However, it might be as well a simple error in the data, as I couldn't find anything on readings from other magnetometer stations. Still, I think that it would be a great loss if I would let this anomaly to be forgotten. Of course, I need to mention that during the time when this mega pulse was recorded, Earth was going through a geomagnetic storm which was caused by something what might be a coronal hole stream, but I'm not sure about it. Impact was pretty geo-effective, as BZ component reached minus 15 nanoteslas. According to SWPC, in the morning of May 19, KP index reached 6 points. But it seems that the geomagnetic field wasn't the only one which was affected by the recent space weather activity. Since the evening 18 of May, most of public ionosphere monitors started to experience some serious issues. For example, my favorite Giro monitors are still not updated and last images were generated 6 days ago. And Giro site is not the only one which is missing the data from the time of impact. Luckily, the tech map of South America is again online and we can compare the readings from the time before impact and after it. This animation was generated on 16th of May. And this one shows the ionosphere 4 days later. As you can probably see, density of electrons was visibly reduced during the time of missing data. Anyway, I don't like too much when someone tries to hide some interesting data from me, so I doubled my efforts to find the missing frames because I don't trust too much in the CTIPE ionospheric monitors which are available on ISWA, I've decided to use the German Swazi tech maps. Apparently, even this source of data seems to experience some kind of problems, as the monitor is not updated since May 22, two days ago. But even on the image, which was published as last one, we can see that the condition of ionosphere was rather poor. Luckily, readings from the time of last geomagnetic storm are still available. When we'll check the images from the morning of 19th of May, we'll see that the disturbances were actually pretty strong, what might explain the missing data on other monitors. It seems that the behavior of electron cloud started to be irrational beginning from the midnight. 
It seems as well that the density of electrons was reduced during this time. Around 14 UTC, the size of cloud became much smaller than before. But now it's time to change the subject. Last time I've spent quite a lot of time to discuss the transfer of energy around our planet. It seems that couple days after I've published my previous movie, a nice example of this process was noticed by global media. I'm talking of course about the heat wave in Alaska, which was taking place recently. On the satellite imagery we can track easily the transfer of heat along a field line which connected itself to the Philippines and stretched itself over the entire North Pacific. This is where the warm air masses came from. Another great example of magnetic reconnection in the atmosphere can be seen over Australia at the time when I'm recording this movie. Look as the huge flux tube which was connected somewhere in the middle of Indian Ocean changes the connectivity point to the equatorial air masses north from Australia. After the reconnection, wet equatorial air masses start to be dragged down towards the continent. People living in this region can probably expect a lot of heavy rain in next couple days. But the most freaky stuff is taking place right now as always over the North America. If my theory is correct, then we will see really soon as the category 3 hurricane Andres connects itself right to the polar vortex. This can be really interesting. After a couple days I can say already that mother nature made something what I would never try to predict. Field line which I've pointed out didn't manage to connect with the Hurricane Andrew. Instead, the influence of air masses connected to North Polar Vortex gave birth to another tropical storm called Blanca. Right now, Blanca is a category 2 storm and there is a big chance that it will make landfall on the west coast of United States in next couple days. Small correction. Soon after I've recorded this part of movie, Blanca reached category 5, the highest one. People living in the area of Bay of California should prepare for very serious event. In my last movie I pointed out the area of New Zealand as the region where the field lines are causing some serious increase of seismic activity. It seems that the magnetic tentacles are still interested in this part of the globe. And it is clear that the seismic activity is seriously growing in strength. But right now I need to change the subject once again and show you some very interesting readings from the Bartle Cosmic Ray page. As you can see there was another attack of giant dots. 
It wouldn't be anything new for me if it would be recorded by the Spaceship Earth Network. But those readings come from the right side of page, where are placed monitors which belong to the Muon Network. And such views are very uncommon there. Anyway, those dots were erased couple hours after they appeared on those graphs on the last day of May. Luckily, I've managed to save those images on my computer before the censorship got them in their hands. And to be honest, I really doubt that they were caused just by some errors in the data, as at the same time a satellite recorded some weird spikes of low energy protons at the EPAM graph. Sadly, except the inflow of particles into the current ring, I didn't manage to find any visible effects of this mysterious cosmic ray burst. Sorry, I've searched a little bit deeper and actually some Antarctic magnetometers recorded variations of geomagnetic field which reached some 600 nanoteslas in the evening of the same day. This pulse was a local event, although in stations placed nearby some weak disturbance was recorded at the same time, so it wasn't an error. But let's look at more recent data. During the third date of June, a satellite recorded one of the most spectacular events ever. Multiple extremely hot density spikes, which exceeded 100 particles per cubic centimeter, punched our planet one after another with velocities above 1000 km per second. But better, let's simply look at the SWMF plus RCM magnetosphere monitor. Yeah, quite a lot of action. Of course, it wasn't any kind of mistake, as there are multiple ionospheric measurements on which we can see the disturbances which were most likely caused by those impacts. For the end, I would like to show you a recent discovery which explains partially things about which I was talking a couple months ago. Plasma tubes which form along closed magnetospheric field lines. Of course, this animation still can't explain how this process affects the weather patterns on our planet, what I did many times in the past. If you watched my movies before, you shouldn't have any problems to notice how the opposite magnetic polarities power up the tropical storm Andres. It is a clear sign that the storm is a result of another magnetic field line which sticks out from the planet in this area and causes the transfer of energetic particles beyond the ionosphere. This is exactly how the magnetic fields shape directly our environment. And with this claim I will finish this episode. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.